Hey guys, this is Josh from the Tuning School. Today we're gonna to be talking about the differences between the CTSV generations, their strengths, weaknesses, and the differences between tuning them. The Cadillac CTSV has been produced in Michigan at the Lansing plant for the past 15 years. It's an outstanding sport luxury platform that features a V8 engine, rear wheel drive configuration with a manual and sometimes automatic transmission. The Gen 1 CTSV comes with an LS6 from the years 2004 to 2005 and an LS2 from the years 2006 to 2007. They're each controlled by a different PCM. The earlier model years are controlled by a P59 and the late model years are controlled by an E67. The strength of this is the fact that it's naturally aspirated. It's a very strong engine. Um, the other strengths that it has are they only came in one model, which is a four-door with a manual. There's a ton of parts on the market for it. The other weakness that it has would be that it has a six lug pattern for all the wheels, so it's really hard to find an aftermarket wheel for it, as well as the rear ends are made of paper mache. What I recommend doing in that case is calling GeForce Performance Engineering. They have a nine inch IRS kit that you can get for around 4,500 bucks that really completes the car. The second generation CTSV features the LSA engine. Although it was built in Mexico, it's known as a staple of the American LS platform. It features a 1.9 liter TVS supercharger on top. The strength of this is the fact that not only is it supercharged, but there's a ton of aftermarket performance parts like Metco Motorsports making their pulley kits for it that can increase horsepower exponentially for a relatively decent cost. When it comes to the weaknesses of the CTSV platform, the body styling is in three different ways. It's a coupe, it's a sedan, and it's a wagon. The problem being is that the coupe and sedan models have fallen relatively low on the scale from which they used to be bought for, around 65,000, and the wagon has stayed upper in the 40 to $65,000 range. The other weakness that the CTSV has is because of the supercharger, actually. What happens is it develops a lot of heat inside of the supercharger lid itself, which causes the intercooler brick, which is an air to water cooling system, to fail. What ends up happening is the end tank collapses on the intercooler brick, causing the system to fail and your engine to absorb coolant. What I recommend doing in this case is giving a call to ProSpeed Autosports to get their heat exchanger system and Stewart EMP pump kit upgrade, as well as calling them or dedicated motorsports to have your intercooler brick modified to handle those extra pressure and extra heat. And last but not least is the third gen CTSV. It features the LT4 engine out of the C706 and even shares the same E92 computer. The best part about this is the fact that the LT4 power plant is very powerful. They mated this with an eight speed automatic transmission. Now what this means is there's no manuals for this year model and unfortunately it only came out in a sedan. I was really looking forward to seeing maybe a wagon option, but GM chose to kind of keep it close to the chest on this one. The major flaw with the LT4 has to be the cooling system in relation to the supercharger. What ends up happening is since it's overspun from the factory, you get ridiculously high intake air temperatures, as well as when it tries to cool down the motor from this overspun hot air, it ends up causing a taxing on the coolant and on the oil system. What I recommend you do is reach out to ProSpeed Autosports and get their oil cooler set up. That will help eliminate the issue on that side. The other issue with an LT4 means that it's direct injected. And as we all know, direct injection isn't really what we thought it would be. It's great for gas mileage and it's really good for EPA standards, but when it comes to making power, it kind of leaves a little bit on the table. What ends up happening is you run out of a low side system, which would be your fuel pump in the tank, and then you'll run out of a high side system, which will be the high pressure fuel pump inside of the engine for the direct injection capabilities. What I recommend you do is reach out to Cordis Performance and get a low side fuel system kit from them and call Brian Tooley and get a 38% larger fuel lobe on the cam to take care of your high pressure fuel pump. Overall, the CTSV has performed outstanding in the sedan market. It has done well around the Nürburgring, it has done well quarter mile times and zero to 60 times, and always places well in car magazine comparisons. Unfortunately, at the closing of 2019, Cadillac has decided to discontinue the CTSV model and move on to the CT5. We're interested here at the Tuning School to see what the CT5 has to offer in its tuning capabilities and in its power plant. Now when it comes to tuning, this is where they kind of separate much differently. The Gen 1 CTSVs, like I said, feature two PCMs. So you have your P59 and then you have your E67. 
The issue with the E67 of the first generation is that it has a high and a low MAF curve. What that means is now I have to split my curve in half and match the values that I believe it's 5800 hertz to be able to make the vehicle run smoothly. Not so much of a big deal, but it can kind of be a hassle if you don't match those values up. The P59 ECU of earlier models can be a little bit slower for some tuners, but with a little bit of patience, you'll have much success. The Gen 2 CTSV features the same E67 computer, but this time instead of splitting up the math curve into a high and low, they decided to make it all one table again. It has a lot of resolution, which makes it very easy to tune using the airflow-based system. It also features a fuel pressure system control module. What this means is that as boost rises because of the LSA supercharger, it will try to compensate by adding fuel pressure. You can actually license this and modify this file inside of the tune. The Gen 3 CTSV is where the Gen 5 platform comes into play. I highly recommend that you reach out to us and get our Gen 5 book, as there's a lot of information that differs from the Gen 1 and 2 platforms, since those were airflow-based and the Gen 5 platforms are load-based. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. For more high-performance tuning knowledge, check out thetuningschool.com, where it features our live seminars, online courses, and our Learn at Home courses. Drop in the comments below what your favorite gen CTSV was, and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. And as always, stay tuned.